Um, proud of our team. Um, the way we fought yesterday, there was still uh, you know, a pretty significant uh, amount of adversity we had to fight through um, defensively. Flo and his group, some of the adjustments that they uh, made um, based upon some of the things we put on tape the first three weeks and how we could use that to our advantage. Um, thought they made some critical plays there in the second half um, to, to really help bring it home. Uh, clearly led by Harrison Smith, um, so fired up for him and um, so thankful for all that he means to our team, both as a leader, what he was about last week in his preparation, bringing the guys along with him. Um, we got the right guys in this building, um, coaches and players. We're just going to go back to work this week. A uh, heck of a challenge uh, with Kansas City coming to U.S. Bank Stadium. And as I told our team, I think it's very important that we continue to strive and work towards playing the type of performance at home in front of our fans, for our fans, um, to really truly make that the best possible atmosphere that we can uh, and, and challenge uh, for a, you know Super Bowl champs from last year coming in um, between Coach Reed and, and you know Patrick and everything that the, comes to town when you play the Kansas City Chiefs. It's going to be a heck of a challenge, but one uh, you know I feel our team is is excited for the preparation and and taking on such a significant challenge and, and see if we can continue building on some momentum from yesterday. Um, just uh, injury updates for you guys. Hoping to get Lewis seen some limited work and kind of see how he progresses with that hamstring through the week. And then Garrett Bradbury was really close um, to, to trying to give it a go. Um, probably more of a situation where we had to kind of protect him from himself a little bit, uh, just knowing how tough Garrett is and wanting to be out there <coughs> with, <coughs> with, with his teammates, um, but want to be sensitive with that back injury and expecting him to have a good week of prep this week and, and uh, you know, all, all more than likely you have a chance, barring any setbacks, um, from, for, uh, to have a good chance to be out there um, this Sunday. And then you guys will see just a, a roster move. Junior Ajo uh, will be waived today. Uh, just a procedural move as part of kind of getting him on the practice squad, uh, part of that international pathway program. And it'll be great to you know have that extra extra body. Junior's been great since we've uh, since we've gotten him here, and he can't wait to get back out on the practice field uh, with his teammates. But as far as Davenport, Metellus, and Murphy, those guys all uh, came out uh, relatively clean, and, and hopefully we'll we'll get them some work and, and pick up where they left off yesterday. The O line played just overall. Yeah, I thought it. You know, for the most part, um, you know, outside of a couple plays here and there that are going to happen against a good front like that, um, I thought they were really physical in the run game. Um, you know, we had four explosives, thirteen runs of, pl of five plus. Uh, really was able, you know, be a huge reason um, why we were able to, you know, stay efficient. Did not have the day we wanted execution wise on third down, but I thought the run game was really kind of the driving force behind um, us being efficient. And, and getting some of the plays that we did um, in the past game. And, uh, you know, that's been encouraging to see where we've gone kind of in that yards per rush category from a couple weeks ago. And, and now I think we're right around the top 10 now um, in actual yards per, per, uh, per called run. So i um, excited about where those guys are at. They've totally bought in, you know, 100% to the technique, fundamentals, the mentality um, that we need to have them have. I think our tight ends have been a huge part of that as well. Can't say enough about Josh Oliver. Uh, yesterday, again, um, some, some critical, critical blocks at the point of attack. And then our receivers as well. You know, you know, we're backed up there, call kind of a power play off of our own, kind of in the shadow of our own end zone. And you see number 18 going in there, um, getting a hat on Von Bell and, and springing Alex for kind of a big hit there off uh, to get that crucial first down in the backed up situation. So it truly is kind of to answer your question, an all 11 thing. Um, but the O-line and, and those interior guys, uh, you know, had a, had a really solid day in the run game. Just personnel-wise, with, with Reisner, what was the thinking going in? Was it maybe getting him in the game, or did you know going in we're going to stick with this spot? No, it was, it's, it's, you know, truly something where he's ready to go. Um, we'll get him another good week of prep this week, and, and that best five uh, mentality is going to hold true, and those guys know that. Um, but I, I like the way that those guys have responded, and I like the way that Dalton's kind of come in here and, continues to you know just grind away in his preparation and, and catching up with you know scheme wise uh, where we're at and and uh, you know I know Dalton will be ready to go when called upon Kevin it seems like a lot of those fronts where it's maybe one or two defensive linemen and then linebackers and defensive backs kind of around that have, have popped up again uh, what makes that the most challenging thing for quarterbacks as they're trying to decipher that yeah I think uh, it depends on the play 
Um, you know, if you're in, uh, and I don't know if you're speaking of identification in the run game or more so um, the protection element. There's just, you know, we saw a dime yesterday. Um, they were using Jeremy Chin and, you know, multiple uh, positions, big nickel, playing safety, playing that dime backer. Just the communication and making sure we identify it the right way. A couple times we were going fast, um, trying to take advantage either tempo or a quick cadence out of the huddle, and, and, and they got us on a couple there. Um, it just all comes down to communication and, and getting that continuity up front and on the same page as Kirk um, each and every snap of a game and, and you know how we're being defended and the JJ program and, and, and just how some of those looks tend to kind of be different than your, just your standard three deep four underneath zone defense. Um, you know, there's some things sometimes we've got to work through on the sidelines and I thought our guys did that. And, and then there's the situational element of going fast or like we've had now for the third time this year, a positive play off of kind of one of those end of quarter sequences where we can possibly get a free one and no bigger than, you know, a one-on-one -on -one when they're kind of hard to find sometimes for Justin, a one-on-one -on -one there and Kirk doing a great job orchestrating that, getting the, holding the safety and giving, you know, really throwing it to a great spot versus a good matchup there. Yeah, I was talking in some ways about the things that you guys are throwing at opposing quarterbacks. Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess to that point, how much does that develop when you have Marcus Davenport in there? To be part yeah, of the Marcus game? Davenport just gave him a game ball not too long ago in the team meeting. Um, the word that comes to mind, Ben, when I think it, when I turned on the tape and watched him was just disruptive. I mean, he's uh, such a force to try to block one-on-one -on -one in the run game. Some of those looks we can get into, whether we're bringing pressure or not, allow him to take gaps when he wants. Um, had a great spin move rush versus a one-on-one -on, -one on the guard. And then uh, talk to the team about it the night before the game, visualizing 99, 0, 98, having a meeting at the quarterback. And it, and it happened in some critical, critical downs, really when you, know, you saw us <coughs> get off the field there when it wasn't Harry making the play. It was really one of those three guys. Uh, Pat Jones had, a, you know, had made some significant plays in the run game. So those outside backers, if you're going to have uh, multiple kind of groupings on the field. Those guys have to show up from a disruption and physicality standpoint. And that's kind of what we envisioned for Marcus uh, when we went out and got him. And it was just awesome to see him go out and make it come to life. What about Bullard? How high a level is he playing at? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, he's so consistent, you know, doing his job in the run phase, uh, not only just winning his gap, but then, you know, making some plays at the football. And it's not always easy for those interior guys in kind of a gap sound defense to make actual tackles, but uh, he's done it. He did it, you know, obviously on that fourth and short against the Chargers, and he continues to be a heavy presence on the interior. And Harrison Phillips has played a lot of snaps, but he's been really, really solid all year long. Dean showed up yesterday as well. Um, and then Jay Roy was up and, and, and kind of brings a little bit of athleticism to that group, still, you know, maintaining, doing his job. So we'll continue to build kind of around those interior guys. And then I think, uh, you know, I think you'll see Tonga, uh, you know, make an impact again this year as well. He's continuing to work and, and we're just trying to find those right groupings, what we can have up on game day based upon what the whole plan is. Can, can you can you bring extra pressure against Mahomes, or is that a re recipe for disaster? Yeah, I just I think whether you're whether you're bringing extra pressure or you're rushing for, um, you know, I think he is as good in our league that we have of a quarterback that, regardless of circumstance, can take whatever the situation is and turn it into a, you know, it, it could be the you know the percentages would say based upon pausing the tape in that moment that something good is going to happen for the defense. And then you, you play out that snap, and it turns into a catastrophically critical play for the offense uh, just based upon his skill set to extend plays. He sees everything. Um, and then most importantly, he can throw the ball anywhere he wants on the football field at any time. So you got to have really great discipline to your rush. If you do pressure, uh, you got to feel really good about it getting home, and then you got to feel good about what the coverage is going to look like on the back end because they've got weapons, clearly uh, the best tight end in football. You know, he lines up all over the place, runs just about every route in the playbook, and then they've got really good complementary pieces, uh, you know, guys that can change the game at the wide receiver position. They've got backs that uh, are great in protection but also can be forces catching the ball. And um, the, the offense <laughs> as a whole, we're really diving into it. Uh, but it's a huge, huge challenge to defend this team. We got to be at our best every single snap. And if you have any let up or any breakdown, he's going to find it and make a huge play. Do you interact more with a week like this when you're dealing with a Mahomes 
with uh, with Brian to kind of really define what you want as a head coach yeah. defensively. Whether you know, I'm just assuming you can't do exactly what you did against uh, uh, Young as opposed to Mahomes. Yeah, I think uh, you know I've tried to be intentional. I remember talking to you guys about you know kind of in my reflection of you know my first year. Um, I've tried to be much more intentional about getting that time with Flo early on in the week. Anything that I could provide from a perspective of what I'm seeing uh, as an offensive coach, maybe if I was putting myself in the myself in the shoes of Frank yesterday or or Andy and 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 his staff this week, where I can see things that I would see and hey, maybe you can line up like this and do this, or maybe you can. And he's normally already down that road. Uh, that's what I love about him is he's always thinking about taking something and and either repackaging it or changing the look altogether or taking that look and running something completely different out of it. So um, it's definitely something I've tried to be intentional about, especially as the season's gone on uh, over these last two weeks, and, and I'll continue to do so for sure. Kevin, as a coach and a competitor, what do you enjoy most about a week like this and where maybe 90% of America is picking the opposing team and no one is picking you guys to win? win? Yeah, you know, for me, especially uh, with where we're at, you know, after the, the, the first four games of the season, um, this team is kind of locked in on that. Um, you know, it's really not a cliche when you're living it, but that 1-0 and mentality, let's just have the best possible post-game Monday we can today. Um, players handle what you can handle on your day off and in your preparation, uh, both physically and mentally, uh, to then make sure we have a, a damn good practice on Wednesday and carry that over. Because I really think that's been a huge factor for us in, in, in the last really two weeks of, of going into these football games, uh, feeling like we've earned the right to have confidence. And when you're playing a premier opponent that you know causes so many issues really <laughs> in all three phases, uh, your preparation better be really good. Uh, otherwise, you're, asked, you're setting yourself up for, uh, for some problems on Sunday. So we've got to control what we can um, as coaches and players, and, and that's just do everything possible to prepare our football team to, to, to have our best really effort yet of the season. And, and uh, we're still looking for that game of winning the turnover battle. Um, and, and we've got to continue to work to improve on that. Um, that's going to be something we're chasing all season long. Kevin, yeah, you talked yesterday about wanting more plays offensively. Why do you feel like that's such an important thing? And I guess what path can you take to get there? Well, I think, Alec, for the starting point is we've been yards per play successful. We just need those opportunities, you know, averaging over six yards. I think we were right at six again yesterday. That normally leads to efficient offensive football. Um, you've got to be good situationally, either finishing in the red zone or on third down, getting yourselves. That's kind of one of the reasons why I went for it on that fourth and two, because I just felt like that was a moment where we needed for our football team a new set of downs, and it was worth uh, the risk in that moment, we get the first down, and then uh, wouldn't you know it, we go down and score. Um, and I think it's just a mentality thing. Uh, those guys got to understand, um, you, know, I, you know, you didn't see very many guys heading towards the sideline after that. If there was one or two, I was waving them right back on. Um, you know, they've got to feel that, and we just need that urgency every single third down from all 11. We cannot have uh, that one individual breakdown and in protection. Uh, we can, you know, our quarterback's got to be dialed into exactly what we want them to do. We've got to be decisive, uh, detailed in our routes, techniques, fundamentals. And when all of that comes together, you earn yourself a new set of downs, which for this offense is everything. Uh, we can apply tempo. We can apply different personnel groupings. We can kind of reset the stage of how we want to attack. Uh, but we need to convert uh, more opportunities than we have over these last couple weeks. In your, in, with this four weeks gone now, are you anywhere close with Kane or Chris Reed in terms of getting them uh, designated? To yeah, I think both those guys are, are progressing. Um, they're doing everything that they can in their control to work their way back. Um, talking to Tyler and, and, and Quace and trying to figure out uh, what's best for those guys as far as when we open those windows, uh, those conversations will be ongoing. But Kevin, I can tell you, it does feel good to know we've got such quality players that are kind of doing their part um, to eventually have an impact on our team. Because I do believe we're going to need everybody um, at some point this year uh, to hopefully chase this thing down. Probably not this week. Uh, haven't had those conversations yet, uh, but I'll keep you guys posted. Dang, Kirk talked yesterday about Cam Akers and just how he can be good for morale. <laughs> Said he was talking to himself in the huddle. Uh, what? What's your experience with him, and where does that morale boost show up? Um, you know, when you were in LA, and, and 
what you've seen here. Yeah, I think he's, you know, he's, he's, he's got a feel to him in game of kind of that quieted mind that I've talked about before. I mean, there still are a lot of things that are new for him um, right now. And uh, even yesterday, we're trying to go fast. And Kirk's having to basically do an install on the field in that moment. And just to make sure that he's good. And then he ends up springing a, a decent run right there when the five spiked inside. But uh, Kirk just, you know, I had a conversation with him as well. It's, it's never going to be too big for Cam, uh, regardless of the situation. Um, as long as we keep preparing him and, and seeing how he compliments Alex when those guys can both stay fresh um, and be maximizing their opportunities. It was exciting to see that yesterday. I thought he had some good hits in the gun, kind of really seeing it, finding it, patience. And then, and then Cam's always going to have a real firm, solid finish, just like Alex does, where yards after contact should be a good number for him. Cool, guys. Thank you.